Today's tips was inspired by a question that somebody asked a couple of weeks ago, but also something that I've been teaching my students in the Successful Wildlife Professional Program. So today's question is from Jerry Addison, and he asked, I am curious how I can make an impact in other countries in big issues like illegal poaching of rhino horns in South Africa and the illegal logging avocado farming of the protected oilmill for for forest monarch sanctuary in Michel Michoacan, Mexico. I hope I'm saying that okay. So those are great questions and I have a couple of answers to them. First, we really wanna make an impact in a not super exciting way. You can always donate to organizations. I know probably a lot of people here, they want to get their fans more involved. We join this field because we want to get involved. So doing a donation is just like a pretty simple, fairly easy transaction. Following groups that work on these sort of things. I'm assuming you're in the U.S., but whatever country you're in, you can write to your government officials to try to ask them to um, support initiatives that support those conservation issues that you're concerned about in other areas of the world. And I uh, volunteered with um, politics for a while, and I can tell you writing letters is huge, especially if you do a handwritten letter. That is huge, and elected officials actually pay attention to stuff like that. But if you're in this group, chances are you want to get your hands dirty and you want to get involved. So you can volunteer and you will find lots of programs out there for you to volunteer abroad. A lot of these programs require you to pay money if they're abroad, especially if in Africa. And I did a podcast with Matt Snyder a couple of months ago just about this experience. He did a paid to volunteer experience and it eventually led to an internship and job right after he did this experience. But you do have to be careful with these sorts of organizations because some of them are more tourism than they are volunteering and doing conservation work. So it's really important that you do your research. And also this opportunity is not available to everybody right away. You might not just have thousands of dollars of disposable income to go study abroad or to go abroad and volunteer to help rhinos. There's a couple of other ways you can volunteer. That's through community science. It's also called citizen science. And I am sure if you go to SciStarter.org, that's S-C-I, and the word starter.org, and you search in rhino or monarch in the portal, you will find projects that you can participate in. So for rhinos, perhaps there are important camera trap projects out there where you can identify the species in different protected areas, or maybe they're studying rhino behavior. You can be a volunteer who is looking through those photos and helping people categorize this information so citizen science, community science is science where volunteers that have no um, scientific background can participate and you sometimes undergo a little bit of training and you can participate and help out real, these are real scientific projects. And if you do it in the right way, this is what I was teaching my students, you can actually count that as a volunteer experience and put it on your resume. It counts as legit experience, but you have to do it in a systematic, correct way. So monarchs, they migrate. So again, if you're in the United States, we have lots of habitat here in the United States that is really important for monarch butterflies. So a lot of the conservation efforts are also done here. So I would look into what you can do locally. And that can be as simple as planting milkweed. That can be as simple as identifying um, and plants and uploading them again to community sciences and science projects. I know in the Midwest, there are tons of nonprofit organizations that are focused on monarch butterflies. But I also want to bring to this bigger question, this goes for obviously you, Jerry, but lots of you out there. I think you have to go abroad. You have to travel to Africa to make a change in the conservation world. And that is so not true. There are so many things that you can do right around here. The monarch butterfly, it's an endangered species now. I see them all the time, not as much as I used to, but I'm here in Illinois and I see them. And there's things that I can do as a homeowner. If you live in an apartment, you can have like potted plants of native. These plants are important to pollinators. They do support insect life. 
And even if you're not targeting endangered insects like monarch butterflies, you're supporting the ecosystem from the bottom up. So you're providing food for insects, which then provides feed for other animals. There are threatened and endangered species all around us. And maybe it's a mussel, or maybe it's an amphibian. Maybe it's not a glamorous species like a rhinoceros, but all these animals are important. And a lot of these animals don't get as much help too, because they're not so charismatic. Although they are, in my opinion, I love them. Especially monarchs are beautiful, but even mussels, even, um, I love salamanders. I think salamanders are really cool, but there's so many animals out there and plants and fungi that need our help. So I encourage you to get involved and to explore what you can do around you. And again, this is a legit experience. You can put this on your resume. You can use this to get a job. So stop thinking that you have to go somewhere else. And in fact, if you want to work in the United States, you want your experience to be in the United States. If you're feeling limited because you can't afford a trip to Africa, you're good. There's so much stuff for you to do here. There's so much stuff to do online with community science. Make it happen for you. One of my favorite phrases for this career is you have to ensure your own success. You got to think outside of the box. And this is a great way to think outside of the box. Have a great week. Bye.